Hello, my name is M. Jason Graham, and this is Writing. This is Writing is brought to you by MJGStoryCreation.com. Go to MJGStoryCreation.com to get tips on how to turn your idea into an epic story today. So we are continuing our conversation about adventure. And as you can see, today we are talking about Act 2 which is opportunity, the O in our code. And so when we last left off with Act 1, we were opening to a new opportunity. And so this is precisely uh, what an opportunity is. It's, it's a chance to really let the protagonist flex their muscles and show what they can do in an unfamiliar situation or in an unfamiliar environment, slightly familiar. So let's take a look at the breakdown. So we have our third book in. So just like in our second book in when the character was leaving, essentially leaving act one, now we want to show the character come into this new world with the third book in. And then we introduce new communities. Now, some people would say, would, would try to draw parallels, and there's different ways of doing it. Um, you can draw parallels between uh, communities in Act 1 and the, the new ones in Act 2, or you can have the same communities in Act 2 as there were in Act 1, but now maybe because of the, uh, because of the, shift, the character has seen a different side of those communities and those foils. Like, for instance, if if there's a shift and um, some there's people who attack the house and your mom that you thought just baked cookies, for instance, was a homemaker, she turns out to be a, a martial artist and you knew nothing about that part of who she was. So that's a way of changing a community <clears throat> and changing a foil interaction without having to come up with something completely different. But it's generally a good idea to have some similarity between the two communities. So the first community, um, the stumbling block, rears its ugly head immediately again. Again, it doesn't have to be something huge or big. We just need to be reminded that it's there. Second community, you get a pivotal foil. So <clears throat> the pivotal foil is the character that is responsible for ushering your protagonist into the aha moment. Each one of these, as we discussed, um, each one of these communities will have a foil, but only one of them will be a pivotal foil. So when we, we think about Star Wars, Obi-Wan Kenobi, <clears throat> Han Solo, and Leia are all foils for Luke, <clears throat> but... Since Luke wants to be a Jedi, his pivotal foil is Obi-Wan Kenobi. And it's the same thing with him because he just thought that Obi-Wan Kenobi was just an old man. He didn't realize that he was a Jedi until after they left Act 1, after they left Tatooine. All right. And then in the interaction with the third community, that's when the antagonist is revealed. So this is the first time that your protagonist gets to see or become aware of the antagonist for the adventure. The next thing that has to happen is that, of course, he has to manage the stumbling. He or she has to manage the stumbling block, which means it's, it's not a solved thing. Um, there's an antagonist, so he's got to get he or she has got to get their stuff together. And then you have the conjunction, which is which is a, sh a shift but bigger. It is a conjunction is when the antagonist and the protagonist clash face to face. Um, when you saw with the rivalry, the conjunction was the last thing to happen before, pretty much before the story was over. Here, this is happening in the middle. And then whatever comes from the conjunction. It doesn't have to, the protagonist doesn't have to win the conjunction, by the way. Uh, the lesson still needs to be learned. And sometimes a loss at the conjunction really heightens the seriousness of learning the lesson. But that's, that's up to you, win or lose. But the key thing that happens after the conjunction, whatever happens, is that there's an unexpected discovery that occurs. 
And so this unexpected discovery is what signals to the audience and to the character that there is more to the story. So, for instance, um, the Glinda sends Dorothy, Wizard of Oz, Glinda sends Dorothy to the wizard. And so she has to go through all this stuff with the witch and travel and meet all of these new people, these, her, her, three, her three foils. Um, and she gets to the wizard, she gets there, and the wizard says, oh, well, if you want something from me, you're going to have to go get something, you're going to have to do something for me. If you want something from me, I need something. That's an unexpected discovery. Dorothy thought that her journey was over, and now there's another leg to it. Of course, and then after that is your fourth bookend, which is, of course, your protagonist leaving to go to discover the discovery, wherever, whatever direction that leads them. <clears throat> so, again, to reiterate, your character can't be tricked. They have to make the decision to go to it. So that means that whatever it is that they're pursuing and they're trying to pursue in the course of the story has to be important enough for them to take this detour or to go this extra mile, if you will. Um, in the case of Wizard of Oz, Dorothy wanted to go home. <clears throat> and in her mind, the wizard was the one who helped her, who was to help her do that. So she had to do this thing if she wanted to go home, which she did. So... Uh, tomorrow, we will talk about D, uh, which is the downfall, of course. We'll get into that. My name is M. Jason Graham, and this has been This Is Writing. This Is Writing is brought to you by MJGStoryCreation.com. Go to MJGStoryCreation.com and get a free one-hour consultation. Get started on turning your idea into an epic story today. I'll see you next time.